We are second year students from the Higher School of Transport in Slovenia, majoring in Environmental Protection and Communal Services. We will present our project, which we gave the title Microplastics yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So, plastic products accompany us at home, school, healthcare, and shops. They have a very harmful effect on us and our environment. However, we can hardly imagine life without plastic products. Fortunately, alternative products are not made of plastic but are more environmentally friendly materials. From the environmental point of view, it is also crucial that the plastic used is recycled as much as possible. Plastic is used in many areas. In our lives, we use it as packaging, housings of electronic and electrical devices, the fashion industry as clothes, the car industry, and many more. For example, we all know polyester. It is a synthetic fiber made from petroleum-based polyester fibers. Polyethylene, used in many inexpensive everyday products such as plastic bags, and glasses, is the most common plastic. We have already heard that its world production is around 80 million tons annually. Polyvinyl chloride found in, for example, pipes, window frames or floor coverings, is a synthetic plastic polymer of vinyl chloride. It is the third most mass-produced type of plastic. Then there is polypropylene, which we can find in packaging, the housing of electrical devices, or car bumpers, it is a plastic material with good chemical resistance and high mechanical and tensile strength. Then, we found some statistics on the use of plastics. A long time ago, people were playing pool table and looking for an alternative to elephant tusks. They were looking for an alternative to billiard balls and came up with plastic. So they replaced elephant tusks with plastic. Most plastics are in packaging, in 2009, its amount was 45,000 tons, and in 2020 it was already 49,000 tons. The amount of plastic is increasing year by year. In the construction industry, a large part also grew in percentage terms. From 2009, when the share of plastics was only 2.4%, to as much as 20% in 2020. Then in the automotive industry, the share has not increased much, but it is gradually growing in electronics. So, to limit the spread of microplastics or to reduce pollution of the environment with microplastics, we must recognize, reduce, raise awareness and understand the problem that arises from plastics. Microplastics are particles with a size of a few micrometers to a few millimeters, so from 20 micrometers to 1 millimeter. All particles smaller than 5 mm belong to microplastics. Until now, microplastics have been most studied in the marine environment, where most of their particles have been recorded. Plastics in the marine environment pose a significant threat to the ecosystem due to long-term degradation. Microplastic particles are consumed by various organisms, from large mammals such as whales and other marine mammals, sea turtles, fish, and seabirds, to the smallest nematodes, such as marine worms, shellfish and some crustaceans, even the crabs from the deepest trenches of the Pacific Ocean, the Mariana Trench, which is the most remote part of the world's oceans at 10,890 meters of depth. They found that each animal had ingested some form of plastic, including nylon, PVC, PVA, and in some cases, fibers could be seen in the stomach contents. And so, these particles that animals ingest travel up the food chain to different species of animals. Microplastics can accumulate in the animal's digestive tract, and additional substances such as phthalates are also released, which are bound to the microplastic particles, thus, microplastics act as a carrier of I was waiting. One of the most likely impacts of microplastics on animals is the impact on nutrition, accumulation in the intestines and, consequently, on the animal's energy reserves. It can also cause physical blockage or damage to the digestive tract, and poisoning can occur, either due to the release of chemical components of plastic into organisms or due to ingestion, and accumulation of already absorbed chemicals in the water. 
despite only 5% of oil being used for plastic production, while the other 95% is used for fuel production, over 8 million tons of plastic are thrown into the oceans and seas yearly. According to estimates, about 300 million tons of garbage have already been in the sea. By 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the sea. As much as 35% of plastic found in the oceans is microplastic. There are about 51 billion plastic microparticles in the oceans, which is 500 times more than the number of stars in our galaxy. Microplastics can also be found in cosmetics, such as powder, cleansing gels, scrubs, detergents, toothpaste, bottled water, baby food, fruit, and clothes. As mentioned, microfibers are found in the food chain of animals. When we eat these animals, they also enter our bodies. For example, a New York School of Medicine study found microplastics in babies' feces. The babies contracted it through the mother when they drank her milk. This means that the mother already has microplastics in her body. An estimate is that a person consumes up to 5 grams of microplastic per week. As already mentioned, microplastics in the body can cause various inflammations and affect the metabolism. Interestingly, when you wash your face, as many as hundreds of thousands of microplastic particles are released into the environment. Textiles made of synthetic fibers are worn by as much as 80 grams of microfibers per inhabitant annually. We could fill as many as five Olympic swimming pools in five years with microfibers from the dryer. We also did a practical test on forming waste microfibers or microplastics. We used polyester clothing, a cardigan, scarf and gloves for our practical experiment. First, we scrubbed all the clothes with a special scraper. We scrubbed dry and wet to prove how much clothes are used when worn and how much of these microfibers enter the environment, and wet was tested to see what happens to the clothes in the washing machine. We rubbed 144 times on those parts of the clothing that were the most, the jacket on the elbow area and the stomach area, the scarf on one part and the gloves on the front. We rubbed each item 144 times, assuming that we had the garment at home for two years and that we wore it twice a week and washed it once a week. For example, the weight of the cardigan was 50 grams, when we rubbed, this haircut was 1.25 grams. This means that the jacket has been worn by 2.5%. All these fibers, during dry rubbing, landed in the air. We could breathe them, or they fell to the ground, meaning rain could wash them off. This is how microplastics enter the environment. We rubbed the gloves 144 times. They weighed 17.92 grams. The amount of shredded material was 0.34 grams, which is also 1.9% wear. We also rubbed the clothes in the wet state, representing how much the clothes wear when the garment is washed in the washing machine. Then we also tested how these microfibers enter the environment through the washing machine. Because microfiber is much lighter than water, it doesn't sink immediately. We proved that with the centrifugal force, these microfibers begin to sink into the water and enter the water bodies through the washing machine. What are possible solutions? We found a Slovenian startup company that installed a special filter on the washing machine at the part, where the water is discharged from the machine, to retain all these microfibers. Then this filter is periodically taken down and cleaned, meaning that these microfibers are removed and disposed of in the mixed municipal waste. What else can we advise to keep the environment healthy? Let's buy as little plastic packaging as possible, throw plastic packaging carefully in the plastic bin, don't throw plastic waste into nature, don't throw ear sticks and other small plastic toilet waste into the toilet bowl, and avoid cosmetic products that contain microplastics, to a greater extent let's avoid using synthetic clothes and make people around us aware of the consequences of using plastic for the environment and people.